let's get started. This is the speaking test of the International English Language Testing System taking place on Saturday the 11th of March at Beacon Centre, centre number BN367. The candidate is Sabrine Valancheri and the candidate number is 00034000. The examiner is Carol Kennedy and the examiner number is 433816. Good afternoon. Uh, what is your full name, please? Um, my full name is Sabrine Valangeli. And what should I call you? Uh, you can call me Saba. May I see your identification, please, Saba? Yes, here it is. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about where you live. Where do you live in your country? Uh, I live in Hyderabad, which is the capital of Andhra Pradesh, uh, in the southeast of India. Uh, it is a very big city. About seven million people live there. And is it an interesting place to live? Oh yes, a very interesting place to live. Uh, Hyderabad has a very long history. Um, so there are lots of uh, ancient forts, uh, mosques and uh, other monuments. Uh, there is a very beautiful lake and uh, there are also lots of wonderful markets. And will you live in Hyderabad in the future? Uh, yes, I think once I finish my studies here, I'll go back to Hyderabad. My husband is from Hyderabad too, so I think we'll stay there. Now let's talk about hobbies and interests. What hobbies and interests are popular in your country? People have many different pastimes in my country. I think the most popular these days are things like gardening and do-it-yourself, which is uh, when people, well, uh, usually men, make things for their home. I think women tend not to have too many hobbies. You can't really call shopping a hobby. <laughs> um, I think in the past, women used to fill up the leisure time that they had with, uh, with craft activities, but sewing and knitting aren't so common these days. I think. Reading is still very popular, especially now these days with the, the new e-readers. And which hobbies and interests do you enjoy? Um, well, like a lot of people, uh, my work takes up a lot of my time. And at the weekend, I like to meet up with my friends or uh, go out with my husband. So I don't really have much time for hobbies. Um, but I do read a lot, especially history and biography. Also, I love collecting art, so I go to a lot of art fairs. I really like uh, colourful, uh, abstract art, which really brighten up our homes. And what hobbies and interests did you have as a child? Gosh, uh, that was a long time ago, let me think. Uh, I used to collect gearings. I think I had about 20 or 25. They were silly things really, but uh, fun for a small child. Uh, I used to like painting and drawing. My parents were very supportive and they bought me a lot of oil paints, but I'm not really very talented. <sighs> I also played the clarinet. I was in a junior orchestra. I remember once we, uh, we played a concert and my reed broke during the first piece and so I couldn't make any sound. And do you think parents should encourage their children to have a hobby or interest? Oh yes, very much so. I think it is very important for children to have something other than school, uh, television and computers. Sometimes a hobby can turn into a very successful career, but uh, even if it doesn't, it can help the child develop as a person as they learn about new things and uh, meet new people who share the same hobby. Now let's move on to talk about the weather. Do you prefer hot weather or cold? Uh, I think I prefer cold weather. Uh, I know most people prefer hot weather, but uh, it is always so hot in my country that it is such a nice change to feel the cold. Of course, in the cold, it's very easy to put on a hat and gloves to keep ourselves warm. <laughs> Tell me about the weather in your country at different times of year. India is so big that there are many different climates. So I'll just talk about the weather in Hyderabad. Generally, we have a tropical wet and dry climate. That means that the summers uh, March to June are hot, over 30 degrees, 
and very humid. Um, sometimes it can reach over 40, which is just unbearable. At the end of the summer, the monsoon comes and it rains for about three months. Uh, after the rainy season, it's winter, uh, which is quite short, uh, just a couple of months. Which time of year did you enjoy most as a child? Uh, well, I think like most children, I would say the summer. Uh, when we had the long school holiday. But uh, I always preferred spring. Uh, there's something so lovely about uh, when everything starts to grow again after the winter. You can almost smell it in the air. And has the weather changed much in your country in recent years? Um, I don't think so, really. Uh, I know that in some countries, the climate has been changing because of global warming. But where I live, it seems to be the same. Just heat and rain. I have noticed something. Uh, in recent summers, when it's very hot, there have been many water shortages. I don't remember that happening when I was younger. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. You have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. There's your paper and pencil. And here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a gift or present that somebody gave you recently. Okay, now you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll let you know when the time is up. Could you start speaking now, please? I'm going to talk about a present my husband gave me last year for my birthday. Uh, we had gone to Istanbul for a few days. My husband had always wanted to go there. Anyway, we had a few days holiday from work and we decided to fulfill my husband's dream as I said earlier, I'm really interested in art. And so even though I had no real desire to go to Istanbul, I was totally captivated by all the beautiful buildings and the wonderful arts and crafts that were available there. The Blue Mosque was my favorite building. From the outside, it looks just like a typical Ottoman mosque, but inside it is quite startling. The large windows with the light reflecting on the exquisite blue tiles made it just breathtaking. Uh, I asked one of the guides um, about the tiles and she told me that they were from Iznik and that they are still made today. When we left the Blue Mosque, we walked down a pedestrian lane full of shops, including some tile shops. In one of the shops, the owner told us that the tiles were made in Iznik. Anyway, one of the tiles really caught my eye. Actually, it sang to me. <laughs> it was of fish, four big fish and lots of little ones, all in different shades of green. I really, really wanted it. But when we asked the price, it was very high, something like 300 American dollars. Obviously, I knew we could negotiate, but it seemed such a high price that we just left. The next night, we went out for my birthday meal just as we were finishing the dessert, the waiter came over and handed me the most beautifully wrapped gift. I knew at once, because it was very heavy, that it was the fish tile. That's why Thank I... Thank you. And does this person often buy you presents? 
well, he's good at remembering my birthday and our anniversary. So he does usually buy me something nice then, but he doesn't just buy a present out of the blue. Thank you. Could I have the booklet, the pencil and the paper back, please? Thank you. Now, you've been telling me about a present you received and I'd like to ask you some more general questions related to this. So let's talk about attitudes to gifts. Can you tell me something about how people feel when they receive a homemade gift and when they receive a shop-bought gift? Well, I think as with everything, it depends on the person and the gift. When a grandchild makes something for their grandparents, uh, like a bookmark or a clay pot that they've made at school, then obviously their grandparents will treasure it. For adults, I think it's a bit different. Uh, if people are going to give homemade gifts, then they need to be of really good quality. Why do you say that? Well, when children make things, it's the thought that counts. But when it's adults making things, it has to look like the present is a proper present rather than something they've made just because it's cheaper. Of course, the thought still counts, and in many ways, our time now is more important or precious than, than money. So if somebody has spent a lot of time making a gift, it will mean a lot. But if someone has made some chutneys or pickles uh, or some other type of food, then it has to be edible and taste nice as well. <laughs> so what about shop-bought gifts? Most gifts these days are shop-bought. And there isn't really anything wrong with that. What is important, I think, with a shop bought gift is that the person buying the gift should spend some time thinking about what the other person would really appreciate. It's no good a husband going into a perfume shop and buying the first perfume he likes. He needs to see what perfume his wife is wearing. That shows his wife that he's paying her attention. And do you think that children get more pleasure receiving gifts than adults do? Yes and no. Uh, obviously, children love receiving gifts, but children do generally get a lot of gifts. Children these days are spoiled and they get too many gifts. So the more gifts they get, the less they value them. Adults, on the other hand, generally have the resources to buy things for themselves. So if they really want something, they can buy it. Of course, this then makes present buying for adults much more difficult. But of course, there are things that we like that we can't really afford, or we can afford them but can't justify their expense. What sort of things are you thinking of? For women, it might be perfume or a day at the spa or a new pair of party heels. Uh, for men, usually something to do with their hobbies or books or CDs. Do you think that more people get more pleasure giving or receiving gifts? Oh, um, this is a tricky one. Why? Well, I think most people get pleasure out of both. Of course it depends. We may not get a lot of pleasure out of giving gifts to children who we know may not appreciate them. But uh, if we have found the perfect gift for someone we love and we know it's going to make them happy, well, then this will really fill our hearts with joy. Um, similarly, if someone receives a gift of something that they don't really want, or they can sense that it has been bought out of haste, then this isn't really going to make them feel that good. But if it's something wonderful, then, well, of course, they're going to feel fantastic about it. Let's move on to talk about the commercial aspects of giving. How much do advertisements influence people when they buy gifts? In my opinion, probably not too much. I mean, most adverts are for things like cars and uh, household products, which aren't really gifts. Although a lot of young people like to be given new phones and other gadgets. So if a parent isn't sure which model to get, then they could be influenced by advertising. And do you think that some festivals have become commercialised as a result of the emphasis on buying gifts? Oh yes, definitely, yes. Um, in fact, I think it's much worse than that. It's not just the old festivals becoming commercialised, but so-called new ones being created just for the sake of present giving. Can you tell me more about that? 
Yes, uh, things like Valentine's Day and Mother's Day, uh, these aren't Indian traditions, but suddenly we find we have to buy a present for our spouse on Valentine's Day. And while it is nice to 